Hello everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my garage where I tinker around with just about everything. For today's project, we are going to discuss some tips to make you a SQL Server Management Studio power user. We start with some hidden bulk editing features. Okay, so problem number one is changing case. Changing to uppercase or changing to lowercase, and there's some shortcut keys you can hit. So here we have a word, all uppercase for the field name, but it's lowercase, and we want to change that. So select the text that you want to change, and then edit, advanced, make uppercase right there, and boom, it's up to, it's up to uppercase. Uh, control Z to undo. I could also do the shortcut keys, Control, Shift, and U. Same goes for lowercase. Uh, this says all lowercase, but it's not, so double click, or you could highlight and select it, and you can do Control, Shift, and L. I'll make it all lowercase. Or you could have also gone up here through the menu to get to it. The second problem that we're going to tackle is to comment or uncomment multiple lines. Now, sure, we could do the old C-sharp approach with the slash asterisk, and we want it to end here, say, asterisk slash, and then those four lines are commented out. But maybe we don't like that. That takes a little bit more time, etc. So undo, undo. There's another way to do it. You just highlight the four lines that you want commented out, <clears throat> and then go up to Edit, Advanced, and Comment the Selection. And they're indented. And I can highlight those and Shift-Tab to move them back. It'll untab them, and my ID is set to two spaces per tab. But, and then if I want to uh, bring them back, I can just go to Edit, Advanced, Uncomment the Selection, tab them over. So that's the second problem. The third problem, this is my favorite, this is block select. And I never knew this, and I've been using SQL Server since version 6.5 in 1998. And the Management Studio here came out in 2005 or 2008, I can't remember. But I've, I've never seen this, and it's really useful. It's rectangular selection. So we all know we can select like this, but it gets all of the line from the, like if I want to, if I want to copy if I wanted to change these var cars right here to here, I can't do it. So I'd have to go in, type that, and change it. Go in, type this, and change it. Go in, type this, and change it. But if you hold down Alt Shift, now well, first I got to anchor it. So let me click up there, and then Alt Shift, and look at that. I can highlight a range, and even better is the following. I can type var car 150, and they all change whatever I multi-select. And if I wanted to make all of these, oops, I have to do the Alt and the Shift. If I wanted to make all these, and I got to anchor it, Alt Shift. Oh, and I'm still holding down the Alt Shift. I can use the down arrow, right, right, right. So you can use the mouse, or you can use the cursor keys. The trick is to hold down the Alt and the Shift key the whole time. So there, now I can, oops, try that again. Anchor it, Alt Shift, start dragging. Then I can use the cursor keys, and then I'm just going to type over it null. And there we go. I can undo it, and I can undo the other one. Change. But that's a really powerful feature. And I'm going to show you later at the end of the video how when you have a bunch of insert intos, man, it makes it really easy to bulk edit those quickly when you're building test data. So stay tuned for that. Next on our list of tips for using SQL Server Management Studio is the map scroll bar mode, what it is and why you'd want to use it. So the problem for this segment is that I have a giant SQL script file. Scroll down to the end here, 2,777 lines. I just went to master and pulled out a bunch of standard SQL Server stored procedures and changed the names around. And then concatenated together, paste, 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 like four times. And what I want to demonstrate is, I don't know where I'm at in this giant script, as I move the vertical scroll bar down here and I'm dragging the thumb over on the right. And if you've ever worked with big, giant script files like this that get thousands of lines long because they're chunks of test cases that validate logic or it's parts of ETL, whatever. There's, there's reasons why you have big script files with lots of subsections. But moving around and the waypoints of where you're at, it's difficult. And that is the purpose of the mapping scroll bar that I'm about to show you. So let's go look at it now. If I go to Tools and Options, and I start out here at text editor, and then I go to all languages, and then I go to scroll bars. 
there are two options here for behavior. There's the default option, use bar mode, and most of the time you'll want to stay in that. It's familiar and comfortable. But any time that you're going to be for, say, a week in a script that's a big, giant script, and you want to be able to move around and have a, basically a map view of it, go ahead and click this. So let's go look at what it, the output is. Click OK, and there we go. So the entire script has been shrunk down into this new mapping scroll bar. Notice as I hover, I can see in the black pop-out box the text that's in that area. So that's handy. Notice also that as I click or drag, the thumb is clear and the height of the thumb is actually relative to what's visible on screen. So that's kind of neat. But the real power of this is that you can see patterns. This script that I cobbled together, demo scripts, not all that great. But even with a script that's not all that great, you can see a pattern. You can see that right to about here was the end of the first script that I cobbled together, about 700 lines. And the green repeats itself again and again and again. So you can tell, oh, he pasted it two, three, four times. Now, in other scripts that you're dealing with, you'll probably have comment blocks, and you'll see patterns where it's wider and a bunch of black text, narrower with some black text, and have green text for comments. And it'll just be even easier with a script that you're familiar with to navigate. So anyway, a very handy feature when you're using a large file. I'm going to go ahead and set this back. Next, we're going to look at some code text editor tricks. We're going to look at snippets, the template explorer, and surround with. So problem number one here in the IDE that we're going to address is a quick way to fetch commonly used code, the code snippets. So let's get some white space here. And then I'm going to go ahead and right click and insert snippet. And what type of snippet do I want? There are 14 objects, and across all those 14 objects, there's 21 code snippets. Let's go to tables. So what do I have in table? I have create table. So I'll go ahead and do create table, and voila. It dumps out the default code for a create table. And then I, of course, would go in and change the names and change the column names and change the data types, etc. But it's a quick way to get code laid out that you frequently use. Now, what's problem number two? It's related, but instead of code snippets with a right click, you go to View, Template, Explorer. And when it comes up, there's a lot more here. There's 47 objects instead of 14, and there's literally hundreds of code snippets. If I scroll down to table, there's not just one for create table. There is a boatload. And I'm going to set up for the third problem here. So we have some sample code. And the third problem is a quick way to wrap this code in either a begin end clause or an if end if clause or a while condition and end clause. And I could type some code in, highlight, hit the tab key to indent, type the code, but there's a faster way. Highlight the code that you want, right click, surround with, click it, and then you have an option. Do I want to surround it with a begin end block, an if end if block, or a while condition and close? Let's do the begin and end block. And there it is. Huh, it didn't indent though. Well, that's fine. I can highlight it and hit tab and indent it myself. So that was three features. How to use code snippets, right click, insert snippet, surround with, right click, surround with, and then the template browser from the view template explorer. And I'm going to set up for the third problem here. So we have some sample code. And the third problem is a quick way to wrap this code in either a begin end clause or an if end if clause or a while condition and end clause. And I could type some code in, highlight, hit the tab key to indent, type the code. But there's a faster way. Highlight the code that you want, right click, surround with, click it. And then you have an option. Do I want to surround it with a begin end block, an if end if block, or a while condition and close? Let's do the begin and end block. And there it is. Huh, 
It didn't indent though. Well, that's fine. I can highlight it and hit tab and indent it myself. So that was three features. How to use code snippets, right click, insert snippet, surround with, right click, surround with, and then the template browser from the view template explorer. The next tip is how to send the output results to the grid, which is default, or to a text, or to a file. So for this tip, I want to copy paste the query results, the output table, into an email. So let's go ahead and run the first query here. And notice that the default in any query is results to grid. There is results to text and results to file. We'll look at those later. But we're going to go ahead and run this query. And we get the data out. And for the purposes of my email, I like the grid. I want a pretty screenshot of it. So I'll use my screenshot tool. Line those up. Grab, say, the top six rows. Pop it over here in the image editor. Pop it over here. That looks good. There. Now I can copy that pretty grid screenshot. And I popped up my empty email. And I can paste in the screenshot. And there we go. I have a nice, here is the data. Blah, 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 blah. So it looks nice. But sometimes I don't want a small, pretty graph. Sometimes I want a bunch of data that a user can click on and go copy unique identifier, the field name, out. Or go copy the column and do things with it. Or if there's bigger IDs, they may want to copy a six-digit ID out, etc. So in those cases, we want to come up here and take it off of results to grid in the toolbar and move it to results to text. Okay, let me click in here. Click the results to text. There we go. When I click that, it, it doesn't change these results. I have to rerun it. So let's go ahead and rerun it. There we go. Now we have the results in text file. But if I control all and I control C to copy and I go back to the email here and I paste it in, it's icky looking. It's sure it's fixed width, but the width is way too wide on this first column. So I'm going to undo. I'm going to go back to SQL Server here. And I'm actually going to use the trick that we learned earlier with the uh, batch editing. So I'm going to hold down, I'm going to anchor right about here, and I'm going to press down Alt, Shift, and I'm going to scroll down, and I'm going to use the mouse pointer and click to about there. Still holding down the Alt, Shift. Yep, got everything. I did make one mistake. But anyway, I'm going to hit the delete key and voila, everything moved back except for one thing. I should have included the top column. So I'm going to anchor there, control, shift, right, delete. There we go. Now all the data is lined up nicely. And when I copy paste it, I'll include the row count too. Copy. And I go over to the email here. And I paste that in. There we go. Now I have nice looking data. Anyway, I get a nice compact view. People can, users of this, consumers of this email can come in and copy, paste, and use the data, etc. Whereas up here, if I wanted to copy unique identifier, I couldn't. But down here, I can. So it's a handy trick to have in your tool belt. Um, minimize this. Yes, I could have output to the file instead of the grid, but I never do. Because when you're down here, you can right click and save results as a file after you've gotten it formatted and edited. Now, there's one thing I want to show. If I go back to grid and I run this, execute, and I get the pretty grid and I copy everything and I go back to my email, you may wonder why bother going that way? Well, here's why. Here's my clipboard from the grid. I paste, and what do I have? I have tab delimited data. So column name, tab, column name, tab. And it doesn't look nice. Worse, when, when a field on the left has a value that's longer versus shorter, it's still going to have short field tab, and it's going to line up there. Long field tab is going to line up way out here. So you can't, the columns, names, and values don't line up. 
For the next SQL Server Management Studio tip, we're going to discuss how to fix IntelliSense if it has stopped working. There's a couple of steps that you can use to chase it down. First, the level set, what is IntelliSense? Well, to demonstrate it, it's the uh, drop-down boxes that pop up as you type. So select star from master, and as the drop-downs pop up, I can keep typing and more options will flow out. That's what IntelliSense is. Well, sometimes, you have an error somewhere in your script, a red squiggle, and that'll block IntelliSense depending on where that error is. So if IntelliSense doesn't work for you, these drop-downs aren't working, that's the first thing to look for. Go over on the right-hand side and look. This is yellow because I haven't saved it. But look for any little red dots indicating an error. Fix those, IntelliSense should stop, start working. If that doesn't do it, the second item to move on to is that sometimes in large scripts, IntelliSense, IntelliSense takes a few seconds to catch up after a big change. So if you just made a big change and you're working a big script, give it a couple seconds and then IntelliSense will catch up. If those two fixes can be ruled out, there's two more to look at and these are a little bit more involved. The first is that sometimes you need to go up to Edit, IntelliSense, Refresh Local Cache. And that'll take, especially on a bigger script that you just loaded, that'll get it working quickly rather than waiting 30 seconds for it to eventually catch up. So that's one trick. Edit, IntelliSense, refresh local to cache. Now there's another one that you probably won't ever run into, but if you're working in a script that's larger than one megabyte, there's actually a setting that turns off IntelliSense because IntelliSense would slow down on big scripts. And if you want IntelliSense to work on those bigger scripts, go to Tools, Options, text editor, transact SQL, IntelliSense has its own section, and right over here, max script size, default is one megabyte. You can go bigger, two, five, or unlimited, but the downside is all that script is gonna be parsed over and over and over again, and it'll, s it'll slow down your uh, IDE. For the next SSMS tip, we're going to see how to fix tabs and convert them into spaces. When you copy paste in a script off the internet or from your past archives, you may have a mix of tabs and spaces and you want to standardize on spaces. And this tip will show you how to do that. So for this problem, I've opened a script file that contains a bunch of tabs. You see the orange arrow there, and there, and there, versus spaces, which are the dots in the tab. I just do I uh, shift highlight and right arrow one, it just moves all the way over all four spaces. But if I do spaces, one, two, three, four. So there's definitely tabs and spaces in this file. Now if I control A, control C, go to my SQL Management Studio, control V to paste it in. I'm gonna have, if I click there and right arrow, that is a tab because, and I'll shift highlight. It's doing two. If I go down and I do one, two, there's the spaces, three, four, and here is just one right arrow and it's a tab. I don't want those tabs because it'll lead to jagged edges. So how do I replace all those tabs? Well, control H is gonna bring up your search and replace window. The default is none of these little options are checked, but we wanna actually click on the reg use regular expression. So we'll click on that. And then we're gonna put a backslash T up here in the find and it finds all those tabs automatically, highlights them in yellow. And then we want to replace that with two, well, we'll do four spaces. One, two, three, four. And I'm gonna first replace one, and another, and another, and you can see it starts to move. And once I think it's good, I'll just hit replace all, the button over here to the right. And voila, 39 are replaced. And they should be spaces. Uh, I could undo, uh, undo, 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 undo. Undo, it all lined up again, and maybe I want it just to be two spaces. Replace all. 45, and voila. So that's how you go about replacing tabs using regular expression. For the next SSMS tip, we're going to learn how to use the go statement and qualify it so that it iterates like a do loop. I never knew you could do that. It's a pretty handy feature when you want to repeat something over and over. So to level set, here's a regular go. There's a select statement above that gets the date, says the date time is, and it actually stamps in the date time that the code was run. 
and the regular Go executes. And there's one execution, green line here. But if I add the number five at the end of the Go statement, that tells SQL Server Management Studio to execute the code block, just one line in this case, to execute the code block five times. So it does. It has an execution there, and then another execution, and another, and another, all the way out to the fifth. And to prove the point, the date and time out to the milliseconds is 517, 657, 847, 987, then it switches to the, 50, to the 59th second from the 58th. And so it really is executing that block above from the prior go to this go, it'll run that block however many times you specify. So you can do some nifty stuff with that feature. Um, it's a, often good to use that instead of a do loop if you just want to do something simple inside of a script. So the next SSMS tip is how to generate a large insert into script from an existing table data. I used to do this all the time in Toad. don't have it where I currently work, but this is a neat feature. I didn't realize it was in SSMS. It's really handy, especially for auto-generating test data or moving data from one server to another and you want to do it in a script. So I start with a table, some random data, and it exists, and I want to get and make an insert into script out of this raw data table from the results. Well, I could copy paste the results out into the IDE and the raw data there, start with that. And then I could type in the green text here, insert into table, get rid of the tab, put a comma, put a comma, put a comma, put the word values in, keep typing away. The rows down below, basically get rid of all the red squiggles, put in a parenthesis so I can have multi lines in one insert. That's a lot of manual work to go and convert this output text file into an actual SQL script. There's got to be a better way. So to do that, SQL Server Management Studio actually has a generate scripts feature. Uh, if you start with your object explorer, go down to the database, test database I have here, go to tasks. And now, I want to pause. It's at the database level, not at the, ta the table level. You pick the database, you pick the tasks, you pick generate scripts, you click past the intro screen, nothing really valuable there. And then you select the specific database objects. Here is where you select the tables, some random data. And I'm going to actually script out some random data and populate it into new random data. But often you'll have many, many tables, and you pick the one that you want to script out the data for and select it. And then you click Next. And it's going to ask you. What do you want to do with the output? Do you want to save it as a script file, save it to clipboard? I want to just open it in a new query window. And then I click Next. Oh, I'm sorry. I click Advanced. This is important, actually, because when I click Advanced, up comes a pop-up, and this is important. I need to scroll down and find types of data to script, and I want to script the data only, not the schema. Really important. So let's go back. So set the scripting options, click Advanced, select the types of data script, select data only, and then you're back at this window and then you can click next. And it asks you to review the summary results, or, uh, selections, and then you click next, and it runs, all goes green, and then you click finish, and then it pops up a new query window, and it has built for you all the insert intos. As each row is a separate line with a separate go here. So that's nice, it saved us a whole bunch of typing. It built out the script to repopulate the data, and then we can choose to do whatever we want to do with the script. Um, what we're going to see in the next slide that we can actually clean this up some more. So here's the SQL that was generated by the previous uh, scripting process, and it'll run. I could execute this, but it has problems. If it was 500 rows, it's going to run one at a time, make a connection, execute, and it's just going to be slow. So we want to clean this up and, and make it look a lot prettier. Rather than explain what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and do it and you can watch. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of all these goes. So we're going to do the control H for the search and replace. We're going to make sure that the regular expression is checked. And then we're going to take the go with a backslash R backslash N. Oops. Backslash N. And it's finding the carriage return line feeds because I'm on a Windows machine and it's highlighting all those so I know it found them. And what do I want to return, uh, update it with? Nothing. Get rid of those spaces that were there from before. 
So I want to remove these. Search and replace that with nothing. And I can do one, two, three. I'll just do them all. So that's nice. I used one of the tips from above that we previously went over, and I replaced all of those lines and, and compacted everything up and made it vertically denser. That's nice. Well, let's see. What else do we want to do? Um, we should range delete... Let's see, seven times to indent. We're going to do this. Let's get rid of this guy. See, we don't have to insert, insert, insert. We can actually take and, well, let's just do this. Click here, Alt, Shift, click here, all the way over, and delete. Boom, that shifts them all over. And here, boom. And give it a little bit of white space, line, line. Instead of having insert, 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 you can do a single bulk insert. So we're going to insert these fields. And we want, I'm going to hit insert to bring them over, these values. I put an outer wrapper parenthesis. I put an, I guess that's the opening, and I put a closing parenthesis. And then I'll just highlight all this and tab. Not quite done yet, but you get the gist of it. I'm going to insert one time 18 records, so it's much quicker, especially if I'm doing sets of 50 or 100. It'll execute a lot faster. But I'm not done yet. There's a couple more things I need to do. I need to take this P key, which is an identity field, and I don't want to insert that. So I'll delete it there, but I need to delete it here too. So guess what? I could go line, to line, line by line, but I'm not going to. I'm going to click, Alt, Shift, and I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. And I'm going to hit delete. Well, actually, I'll do, I'm going to shift to the right one. And to the right one more. There we go. I'm just going to wipe out that whole column. Boop. And then down here, the same thing. I have a space. I don't want to leave it. So I'm going to click and alt shift. And there we go. Highlighted them and delete. They're all lined up. So now I've gotten rid of that identity field. It's not being inserted anymore. I'm almost done. There's one more step. I basically have to come and put commas at the end of all these fields. And I suppose there might be a faster way of doing it by a search and replace with this, with this and replacing it with the same two plus a comma, but there's only 18. I'm just going to use the commas to go down. And so that is how you can quickly edit a script and make it ready to go and clean it up using several of the tips from above. This last SSMS tip is how to list the table sizes by space used and raw count from right inside the IDE. First, why would you want to list the table sizes by space used or row count? Well, to determine which tables are important or high volume when you're doing some data exploration, uh, to figure out which tables are candidates for splitting or cleaning, to figure out which tables are candidates for starting a new archival strategy, start with the big ones first, to focus the performance tuning, etc. So how do you list the tables by space used and row count? Well, you go down through the database and go to the root element node of tables and press the F7 key in the Object Explorer. That'll pop up an Object Explorer details log, the green frame here. And it'll have the name, the schema, the create date, and whatever policy health state is. It's default. Now this is a one-time configuration to fix this, uh, these defaults. You right-click on the column headers, you uncheck policy health state, whatever that is, and then check data space used index space use and row count. And you have to right click, check, it goes away. Right click, check the next one, goes away. You can't do them all in one shot. And once you get that set up, the new layout is looking pretty good. You have all the tables listed here. I hid those, obscured them. But you have all the tables listed here, the create dates, the space use, the index space use, and the row count. So it's looking pretty good, but there's a problem. There's no ordering to it. It's just all alphabetical. So go ahead and click on the column name to sort it. Uh, actually, we would want the data space used. You'd click on that once, and it would sort ascending, and click on it a second time, and it'll sort descending. And when you do that, 
Look at that. The date space u data space used is sorted descending order. We can see that this table, whatever it is, is the biggest, and the next is a bit smaller. But our cutoff is say 350 megabytes, and 399 megabytes is above 350. You can't see it off screen, but in KB, the data space used is in KB. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please click like and be sure to comment and subscribe below.